Thank you, Mr. President. Are we in a quorum call? We are not. We're not. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> I would like to speak for just a few minutes here. Um, number one, uh, the the judge we just confirmed, I think, to the the Eleventh Judicial Circuit, Ms. Abudu, um, is an example of the system being broken. Um, this nominee uh, that I voted against in committee is way beyond what I think the market should be bearing. Is, uh, in my view, uh, a partisan's dream. Uh, it's okay to be a litigant in causes I don't agree with. It's okay to represent organizations that, that I differ with. I don't hold the client against a lawyer, but I do hold positions against the, the lawyer when it comes to uh, cause-driven litigation. Uh, this nominee, at every turn, has taken the left fork in the road to the point of being in the ditch. Um, as a lawyer, she sued a Florida community who were trying to protect children from sexual predators by having requirements at, of notice, but also being away from schools, certain distances, and she sued the community, basically claiming that was unfair to the sexual um, abuser. It's moments like this that should be a wake-up call uh, for this body. Her record as an advocate is not just representing liberal causes, but the rhetoric used and the arguments made convinced me in committee that this uh, is an activist on steroids, and I've tried to work with my Democratic colleagues voting for circuit and district court judges, understanding that Democrats would pick someone I would not choose. That's the way the system works. <clears throat> but in this case, uh, it was a partisan vote. Not one Republican voted for this nominee, and her record, I think, is one of activism and stridency that will, in my view, shape her time as a judge and shape the court in a way that is inconsistent with the rule of law as I know it. So to my Democratic colleagues, you have confirmed this nominee, but I'm, not, I'm sure this is not the last we will hear about Mrs. Abudi. Uh, today, it was uh, announced that Rachel Rollins, the U.S. Attorney from Massachusetts, uh, is going to resign, I think. She's under investigation for unethical behavior and um, using her office for revenge. She is one of the few, maybe the only, U.S. Attorney that I voted against uh, in this Congress. They may, may have been one other, but it was pretty obvious to the, uh, those of us on the committee that the warning signs regarding Ms. Rollins were rampant and that we were buying a problem. And the point I'm trying to make to my colleagues is after we change the rules of confirmation, you don't need one vote from the other side if you have a majority. And um, there'll come a day maybe where we find ourselves in that situation. I always have worried that doing away with the collaborative process to get a nominee to move forward, judges or U.S. attorneys, is going to create a problem where you're down to picking people who have the most vocal support from the most active extreme elements in both parties. And I think this is a case, Exhibit A, of Ms. Rollins. And to my colleagues, all of us are going to have to understand that uh, I respect the home state senator's ability to nominate district court judges, the blue slip process I will honor for um, district court judges, uh, U.S. attorneys, but it puts pressure on us to up our game. And Ms. Rollins, uh, I voted against in committee, and it was obvious that our concerns were justified. 
Mr. Delaney, nominated for the first judicial circuit, uh, performed poorly in the committee. He represented a private school that was sued uh, for allowing sexual harassment uh, to be unchecked and to be covered up. It's okay to represent unpopular causes. Everybody needs a lawyer. But his answers about how he engaged one of the plaintiffs, a minor, at the time were terrible. And it um, seems to me that he would have been better prepared. And he had a lot of support from, from people in New Hampshire, some on our side of the aisle. But I guess my point is you have to be prepared to answer hard questions. And Mr. Delaney was woefully unprepared. And to my colleagues on the Republican side, I think you've done a very good job of asking hard but relevant questions to the nominees before our committee. And we've had a lot of bipartisan support for judges, and we've had some opposition. Uh, as to moving forward, I hope the White House will prepare these nominees better. Uh, the basic understanding of the Constitution, of uh, a litigant practice, basic concepts of the law like Brady motions, just how the Constitution is set up, is not too much to ask of people who want to be a judge for the rest of their life. So to the White House, this process needs to change. You need to up your game. Uh, your goal, I think, should be to try to find people that some of us can vote for on the Republican side and want to get in front of the committee, make a good impression. I'm not saying we did it all right on our side when we were in charge. I'm probably examples where we didn't. Uh, but I tried to make sure that some people that were nominated didn't make it because some of us on the Republican side said no. Uh, there's more than a handful of judges coming out of the committee that I think should not be on the bench. And I say that with the understanding that my um, inclination is to vote for judges nominated by the other side, uh, assuming that that's what I'd like to happen when it comes our turn that if we all vote against the other party's judges, then you're going to put the judiciary in the world to hurt if we have a president of one party and a Senate made up of the other. And that's sort of, we'll be there one day. And given the behavior of the body, I don't know how we deal with that. But between now and then, I'm hoping that uh, there will be more serious deliberation by colleagues on the Democratic side to make sure that the people we're putting forward uh, can answer basic questions. And sometimes maybe we ask bad questions, but I don't believe that the questions being asked of these nominees are unfair, and it just is stunning that people have been in the law as long as some of these nominees have can't ask the basics. So this idea that you're gonna come through the Judiciary Committee and not be asked hard, relevant questions, I hope that has gone by the wayside uh, the idea that I, I will support Democratic nominees is real up to a point. And there have been several of us on this side who've probably voted for more Democratic nominees than we've opposed. And I would try to continue to honor the, the process. I want to keep the blue slip in place. So I'm asking colleagues from red states to work with the White House to see if they can find consensus. When I was chairman, there was a lot of pressure on me to do away the blue slip so we could nominate anybody we wanted to at the um, district court level. If you had two Democratic senators in the state, the blue slip would go away. We could nominate anybody we wanted to. I think that's bad for the Senate. I think that over time we're bad for the judiciary. I didn't change the process. I don't want it changed now. And I do expect us on the Republican side to collaborate with the White House and find consensus where you can. But having said that, um, the last several months have sort of been a disaster for the committee in the sense that the people are not prepared and you're picking folks that are really 
shouldn't have lifetime appointments from my point of view, and we can pass them on party lines and make this problem worse, or you can get a handful of Democrats to do what I've done in the past, and <clears throat> not only vote yes, but sometimes say no. And Mr. Delaney, I think, will probably fall by the wayside. And I say that with no animosity toward him. I just think that's the right, out right outcome here. So if that does happen, I would want to applaud the White House for understanding that sometimes you can't go beyond what the market would bear. And I've shown a disposition and a willingness to work with you. But the recent nominee we just passed is way out of the mainstream. And I'm hoping that we can get back on track, have nominees come for the committee that are prepared to make it, quite frankly, easier to find consensus. And if that doesn't happen, we're going to have less consensus. And there's a handful of nominees waiting to come to the floor that I will uh, vigorously oppose because I think they're not qualified. So with that, Mr. Uh, President, I wish you a great break and hope we can uh, go home and do our business at home and abroad, wherever that takes us, and come back safely. And with that, I yield the floor.